Hi John Hey Jaguars, this is Miss Schooler with another Native American story. This one's called Quill Worker, which is a Cheyenne legend. And this is written and adapted by Terry Colleen, illustrated by Charles Reisner. The Cheyenne Indians, if you're not the ones who are doing research on the Cheyenne, live in the middle, western middle part of the United States. They kind of traveled up and down like Montana, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado-ish area. And this um, story, I want to thank um, the Rourke Cop Corporation for allowing me to read this online. Long ago, when the moon was alone in the night sky, there lived a Cheyenne girl named Quillworker. She had no brothers or sisters, but her parents were proud of their only child. Her skills with a needle brought praise from tribes all around. The old women in the village were amazed that a girl so young had already decorated 30 buffalo robes, a task that usually took an entire lifetime. Quillworker would go to the lodge of the Quillers Society to teach the younger girls. She would describe how she gathered and dyed the porcupine quills with vibrant colors and then created her beautiful designs. And all the while her fingers would fly as she embroidered yet another pouch or quiver, which is where you put your arrows. The old women would argue who among them had taught quill worker the most, for she was truly gifted. One day, as quill worker sat in her parents' lodge, she cut a war sheet shirt from a soft piece of buckskin. It had buffalo hair fringe on the sleeves and across the front. She worked many weeks, sewing red, blue, yellow, and white quills onto it. The design was magnificent with each color of quills radiating from another. And when she finished her design, she cut a breech clout and leggings from the soft wet leather, and then moccasins and a pair of gauntlets. The breech clout is this soft little square of leather that hangs from the waist by um, men and boys. Gauntlets were worn at the wrist to protect um, from by the hunter to protect the bow protect the bowstring from hitting their wrist and leggings were similar to pant legs and they were tied at the belt. Quill worker's mother watched with curiosity. Daughter, why do you make such a warrior's outfit? Your father has one already and you have no brothers. Neither has your time come for a husband. It is true, mother, I do not know why I must do this, but it came to me in a dream. And what is this design? I do not know it. Quillworker touched the front of the war shirt. It is beautiful, is it not? It too came to me in my sleep. Her mother nodded. You are wise to heed your dreams, daughter. That is how the spirits guide us. For many suns and moons, Quillworker labored. And when she finished the garment, she tied all the pieces together in a par flesh. And that's a little leather bag that's used for storage. And she decorated that to match. She then tanned more buckskin, made another war shirt like the one she just completed. This she did six more times, and each time her mother asked, Daughter, why do you make this warrior's garment? And each time Quillworker answered, I do not know, Mother, it came to me in a dream. As she completed the seventh garment, Quillworker wondered at its size. It was smaller than the others, as if it were for a boy instead of a man. To this last bundle, she also added a quiver decorated with the same radiant design. And this is the outfit she's been making. Quill worker's task was finished. She bundled clothing for herself around her quilling needles and filled her parflesh with food stores she'd been putting aside. She took dried turnips, thistle stalks, milkweed buds, choke cherry pemmican, which is like a dried meat, and dried deer meat. She also packed her knife, tanning kit, and cooking utensils. When Quillworker's mother saw her preparing for a journey, she asked, Daughter, where are you going? Quillworker smiled. Seven days from here is the teepee of seven brothers. These are clothes for them. I am to be their sister, and one day they will be admired by all the people. Then that is as it should be, daughter. I will help you ready your things. They busied themselves attaching a travois to each of two dogs. Quillworker was ready to leave. How do you know the way? asked her mother. I don't know how, she answered, but it came to me in my dreams. I will not become lost. Quillworker bade her mother goodbye, and with the dogs following her, she walked in the direction of the mountains. And you can see the travois there, hooked to the dogs.
liked how they carried things. Six days she walked, eating meals of pemmican and fresh berries and sipping from her water pouch. At night she wrapped herself in buffalo robes and slept by a small fire. Her dreams were her guide for the following day's journey. Finally, on the seventh day, she came upon a stream. On the other side, near a grove of trees, stood a large teepee. Could this be the lodge of the seven brothers? It was covered by more than twenty buffalo hides. From the top of the lifting pole flew a long braid of buffalo hair. As she and the dogs approached the water, a boy stepped from inside the teepee. It is I, Quillwalker called out, seeker of seven brothers, I bring gifts. The boy raised his hand in greetings. I am Wahio, the youngest of seven brothers, and you are Quillworker, our new sister. I was expecting you. You were? Did you see me in a dream? Wahio shook his head. I sent you the dream. I have the power of knowing and the power of sky reaching. What is sky reaching? asked the sister. You will see, answered Wahio. The brothers are hunting, but they will return soon. Come, I will show you our lodge. Quillworker untied the parfleshes from the travois and sent the dogs back to her mother. She stepped inside the teepee and saw seven buffalo robes covering seven beds of woven mats. She gave Wahio his buckskin garment and laid the others out on the beds. How beautiful they were! How they shone! Wahio quickly tried on his new clothes while his sister went outside to gather grasses for her bed. This is the buckskin of a mighty warrior, said Wahio when Quillworker returned. He put his arrows in the new quiver. The brothers will be happy too. I did not tell them you were coming. What a wonderful surprise this will be. Singing her song of home, Quillworker gathered wood for the fire and started a pot of stew. She cooked turnips and milkweed buds. There will be buffalo meat when the hunters return, she thought. She was right. Soon the six brothers arrived and Wahio met them outside the teepee. What is that you're wearing? The eldest asked. And what is that delicious smell? Wahio did a small dance to show off his war costume. Quillworker, our new sister, brought this for me. She brought garments for you, too. Come inside and meet her. She's preparing a meal for us now. The seven brothers were happy to have a sister. They admired the new war shirts, which fit perfectly. What handsome brothers you are, Quillworker said shyly. What a beautiful and talented sister you are, the brothers answered. Wehio surprises us with his gift of knowing, but we are pleased. And so it was. For several moons, every day, the elder brothers left to hunt, while Wahio practiced with his arrows near the lodge. Quill workers spent mornings gathering fuel and digging roots and picking berries. She prepared buffalo meat to dry in the sun and tanned hides for clothing. One morning, Quill worker and Wahio were alone in their lodge. Suddenly, they heard hoofbeats and scratching at the teepee door. In his bravest voice, the little brother asked, Who is this? And what do you want? I am Buffalo Calf, was the answer. I was sent by the Buffalo Nation for your sister. Wahio put his head out the door and saw the calf standing there. Why do you want our sister? She is beautiful and makes buffalo hides beautiful. We want to be beautiful too. Quillworker was afraid. She didn't want to go with the calf. Wahio closed the cat flap. Go away. You can't have her. If you won't give me your sister, somebody bigger than I will come. No, go away, said Wahio. And the calf left. The next morning, they again heard hoofbeats and scratching on the teepee. Who is it? demanded Wahio. It is I, Buffalo Cow. I've come for your sister. Wahio put his head out the door. Go away, he said to the cow. You can't have her. The buffalo snorted. You don't know what you're saying. If you don't give her to me, someone greater than I will come, and he won't be alone. They will kill you. Quillworker's heart beat fast. Would her brother make her go? Wahio closed the flap. I don't care. You can't have her. Go away. And the cow left. The next morning, the older brothers stayed home to protect their sister. They were all sitting around the fire when they felt the earth tremble. They heard thundering hoofbeats that seemed to come from every direction, followed by stamping and snorting and bellowing. And then there were loud scraping sounds on the teepee. It seemed as if the hides would tear. All seven brothers looked at the entrance hole. As the clouds of dust settled, they saw the gigantic bull buffalo. He was bigger than any they'd ever seen before, and the entire buffalo nation was pawing the ground behind him. 
Give us your sister or we'll kill you all, roared the bull. Quill workers was afraid. The brothers were afraid. And then Wahio stepped out of the lodge. I am not afraid of you. The bull looked down the boy. Then you are a fool, for you will surely die. If you won't give us your sister, we'll take her from you. The giant buffalo glared with blood-red eyes, and he blew his hot breath on Wahio. The six other older brothers brought Quill Worker out of the teepee. Wahio drew an arrow from his new quiver. Jump into that tree, he yelled. I will use my power of sky reaching. As his six sister and six brothers caught branches of the nearby tree, Wahio shot his arrow into its trunk. Then he caught the lowest branch, and the tree grew a thousand feet upward. Quill Worker and her brothers looked down at the startled herd. Even from this distance, they could see the bull's anger. This will do you no good, he roared, and he charged the tree with his horns. Wood splintered and the tree shook. He will break the tree, shouted Quill Worker. Wahio sat astride his branch and drew a second arrow, sending it deep into the trunk. The tree instantly grew to the height of a mountain. Below the herd appeared very small, but the sister and brothers could still hear the animals bellowing. Give us your sister, roared the bull, and then he crashed into the trunk once again. The tree shook so hard, everyone nearly fell out. Wahio removed his last arrow from the quiver and set it to his bow. He released it high into the branches, and at once the tree pushed through the clouds. Quickly, he ordered, step onto the cloud. Do not be afraid. No sooner had they done this than the buffalo charged again, this time sending the tree crashing to the ground. Quill Worker looked down. We are safe from the buffalo, little brother, but we have come too far. How can we return? Wihio stretched his arms to the heavens. This is our home now. We shall become stars. And as he said this, the starburst designs on their buckskins glow glowed brighter and brighter, enveloping the sister and seven brothers with brilliant light. On clear nights, you can see them still. Wihio is the North Star, who swings the others around him like a giant water dipper. The brightest star is Quill Worker, whose fingers never rest. To this day, she embroiders the night sky with her shimmering designs. And that is the story of Will worker, and there is a big photograph of a buffalo. And in the back of this book, there is information about the Cheyenne uh, Indians. And I was hoping to show you. Um, here is Quill vest that is on a Sioux woman, but it looks a lot like that. And then here is a um, bag. This would be like a parflesh kind of bag. Um, this one is actually from the Dakota, Teton Dakota Native Americans, but it looks a lot like what the, the uh, Cheyenne would be doing. And then these are some Cheyenne Native Americans um, ready for their famous ceremony, which was called the Sun Dance. Quill Worker, a Cheyenne legend.